Yeah, I know. I, I actually do still have a security blanket, the one I had from when I was a kid, but uh, I don't, I, mean, I think I'm sharing too much. This week on Cloud Security Lab a Week, we're going to dive into service control policies, which are one of the most powerful security capabilities once you enable Amazon organizations. We already covered identity-based policies. Uh, we freaking will just call those IAM policies. And that's one of the six major policy types that are supported in AWS. There, there's some details we'll get into with a lot of the other ones, but the three that we're going to focus on early are those identity-based policies, resource-based policies, which we'll get to once we have some resources in our account, and these organization policies, otherwise known as service control policies. These are all different ways of restricting access to services and resources within your account. Now, because we don't have any resources, we are today going to be focusing on those organization policies. Service control policies are, are really simple in concept and very high in impact. They're very similar to IAM policies and in fact, basically use the same policy language, but they do have some differences. Uh, here's what you need to know, and I'm going to use my little whiteboard to draw this stuff out. Where we are right now in our use of organizations is, so I'm going to draw here. If you look in the console, you'll see something that is like your organization root. And underneath that, we have your management account. That was that first AWS account that we set up. And then we also created our security organizational unit, and we put one account underneath that, which was the security audit account. Uh, let me go ahead and make uh, the OU a little bit different because it's a folder and the root because that's kind of a folder. What service control policies do is they enable or disable API calls for an entire account or an entire organization unit. And the way that that works is you write a service control policy. And I have an example of one I'm going to go ahead and show here quickly in a minute. You can just see it kind of peeking over on the side of the window there. But what this is going to do is allow or deny the ability to just fundamentally make API calls. And it doesn't matter who's making that API call. And that's the key difference. With an identity-based policy, the rules are defined and attached to individual identities. With a service control policy, the rules are defined and enforced at the account level or the organization unit level. Now there's some details you need to know as we get into these uh, that are really important in terms of how they actually work. Structurally, uh, as you can kind of get a glimpse of here, it, it's just the same as an identity-based policy. There's a few differences though, and the deeper differences won't really matter today, but we'll get into those as we go along. A key point is that a service control policy doesn't grant any one permissions. It doesn't give an individual an identity or a role any permissions. It just basically defines the scope of what's allowed within an account. And they are also, as with identity-based policies, default deny, and then allow statements will override explicit deny statements. And some of the details of that we're going to get into in a minute. Uh, what that means is, is I'm going to write a service control policy, and today we're going to write one we're going to enforce it on the root account, and you can actually see what that policy is today. And the rules of that policy are going to deny particular actions. One is use of the root account, and the other is the ability to leave the org. Uh, so these are actually really common ones. This is what I generally will start as my service control policy for any organization that I have. Now, you heard me say that these are default deny. How does that work? Well, there's two different approaches to how you use service control policies. It They do have allow statements. It's just that the allow statements are applying to, is this entire API call allowed or denied? It doesn't give anyone permissions to use the API call. So that's what we mean by it doesn't grant permissions. It is a guardrail. And that's the key word to keep in mind when working with these, and you'd think I could uh, make it actually a little bit more legible, but service control policies are guardrails. And so to work, we actually have to have 
and oops, my racer uh, switch to eraser mode here. Uh, we actually have to have an allow all on our route as well as denying the things we don't want. And this is what's known as a deny list approach. The alternative would be to only allow the sp specific permissions that we want to allow. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later uh, when it makes sense. But that would be you don't have an allow all. You actually only allow accounts to do certain things. Now, why is that hard? Well, there's lots of actions and you don't always know what all those actions are. So generally, I recommend when you're getting started and the way we're going to use it is a deny list. We're going to allow everything and then we're just going to start denying specific things that we don't want someone to do. So now, a uh, couple of nuances to these. They do not apply to the management account. So that is basically a safety, so you can't lock yourself out of accounts to do anything. Service control policies, even if you place them on the root, will not affect that management account, but it will affect everything else. You can attach these service control policies to organizational units or individual accounts, but there are service limits. Uh, you can only attach up to five policies to an organizational unit or to an account, but policies are inherited and hierarchical. So if you have a tree structure, switch to a different color to make this a little bit easier to see. So if I have a tree structure uh, with an OU there and an OU here, and then another OU we'll put there, and then an account at the bottom, I can attach service control policies all the way through here. I can do five here, I can do five here, I can do five here, I can do five here. And that account will inherit the policies all the way up that stack. So any allow or deny rule. So it's similar to IAM policies in that what is enforced is a logical sum of all of the permissions and then default deny. Uh, now, if you think about it a little bit more, a service control policy is applied to your accounts and turns on or off API calls within your environment. That does mean if somebody is making an API call from another Amazon account to access a service in your account, they're still going to be able to do that because that API call is going to originate in somebody else's account. Your service control policy isn't evaluated. That API call will uh, say if they wanted to access an S3 bucket, if your resource policy allows access, somebody can still get in. So you do need to understand. And again, this is one that's a little more complicated and we are going to cover the nuances of the interactions between service control policies, identity based policies, and resource policies as we continue going more in depth on our understanding of IAM. And the last thing is, is the just a, a different way of kind of illustrating things. Let me uh, scroll down a little bit to give myself a little bit of space here. The overall scope of your privileges is what is the SCP allow? And then what is your IAM policy grant? So when you go to make an API call, uh, the allowed permissions, so the actual things that you're allowed actions you're able to do is only the intersection of both of those. That's why these don't grant permissions. That's a really key point. That's why I keep saying it. It doesn't give any individual permissions. It just restricts what's possible to happen in that account. And you need to have that API action allowed in the service control policy and also allowed by the individual IAM activity. I want to finish up by just reviewing the policy that we're going to use today. So let me move over so I can get my annotations here. Uh, and then we'll get into the lab. And again, like many of our other ones, this, this lab goes uh, relatively quickly. You'll notice that this has the same elements as an IAM policy. We've got our version listed there. Uh, and then we have our statements. And in here, I have two different things that I am denying. So the effect is deny. The first one is leave organization. That's the API call to pull an account out of an organization. Uh, and I think you can see why we're going to have this one in place. We really want to keep our accounts locked down because it is true. If somebody has like admin permissions in an account, they can pull the account out of the organization. You're left, you know, paying the bill and you don't have any control anymore. Not a good thing. The other, and this is really, really important. And this is what gets rid of that hole that we talked about last week, which is 
restricting that root account. So this is going to deny any actions taken by the root. When you are operating at scale, this is my recommendation. You put this on your org root, and it means that even if somebody can do a password recovery on that root account, they can't do anything with it. And in fact, when we get into monitoring, uh, if they go and try to log in with those credentials, then you would get alerts out the wazoo. So it's really good high fidelity in terms of a security alert because that root account is going to be fully locked down. No one's going to be able to use that. Uh, and the But you still have the ability to use it yourself if you need to. Because, and the last point I'm going to make here, is if I have this account all the way down here in this hierarchy, and it's going to be having these policies in force. And let's say that's the one that says restrict root. It's not, but let's imagine that it is. I can just take that account and I can move it into another OU. And now only these policies apply because it's so hierarchical in terms of how these policies work. So by moving them across, the new policies apply, the old policies go away. Okay, so let me put the that down and let's do a quick review. Service control policies are another way that we can manage what somebody can do in our account. Service control policies are applied outside of the account. That's why I love to call them the security blanket of AWS. We're going to put that nice cozy blanket around our accounts and around our organization units, and it protects everything that's inside. They don't grant permissions. It does open up what API calls are allowed or not. That's why we still have allow statements, but we use them as guardrails to prevent, uh, say, using different regions, making specific API calls. So they can restrict what somebody can do, but they don't give any individuals any new permissions. We can approach this as either an allow list or a deny list, and I covered that already. The management account is not protected by these, so it will never apply to the management account which is another reason why we really want to keep our management accounts locked down. And I talked about a whole bunch of other stuff. And you know what? Let's dive into the lab. Well, let's go through the details. It'll all make sense. These aren't that hard. Uh, oh, one last little warning. Uh, they will generate error messages. And if you think about the evaluation is happening outside of your account, uh, Amazon's been getting better at this, but sometimes it can still be confusing to users. Like, hey, I've got full admin. Why can't I perform this individual action? Uh, and that's something you do need to be careful about. And they are powerful. If you put a service control policy on an account with a running application in and you mess up and you deny one of the API calls, you're going to break your application. As we go deeper in labs, we will go over through testing methodologies. We're going to have some labs where we write SCPs and I show you how to move things around. Uh, for example, you could actually have an OU that's designed for as you're building an account and then you move it into a different organization unit with a different service control policy, which is going to lock it down. Too many words, too many sloppy pictures. You're done with reading my handwriting. Let's get hands on keyboard. Okay. I'm all logged into the console. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually it doesn't matter what region I'm in. I'm going to go to organizations. Now you can also get to organizations by hitting the search box, but uh, you know, it's always up there in the upper right hand corner. So that's the one that I've just gotten into the habit of using. The first thing we need to do is enable service control policies. They're not turned on by default. To do that, click on the left side here, go to policies, and then service control policies, and enable service control policies. It takes a second for that to get kicked in, and we're up and running. Now, what this has already done, if I go back into my hierarchy of my accounts, if I click on my root, for example, you will see that this already has AWS full access, which is in a star.star .star policy attached. Again, service control policies are default deny. This is Amazon's way of making sure that it is not going to break anything in your account. So if you don't have that full access policy, you're not able to do anything. This is why I recommend the deny list where you have that full allow and then you disable actions you don't want. We will do a lab later where we'll actually move that off the root of the org and into a different part and we'll have an area, for example, a high sensitivity production account 
that operates with only allowed permissions, but it is much harder to get right. Really want you to be incredibly cautious and just follow along and do things the way we are in this lab. And if I actually go back to my accounts and if I click on now the management account doesn't matter, service control policies don't apply, but even that security audit account, you'll see that it has policies. It has three attached here. Why three? Wait, we haven't even built one yet because of inheritance. So every account and every organization unit has to have a service control policy applied once you turn this on. And by default, it will get this AWS full access policy. In this case, that's inherited from root. Then it, because it's also by default, every OU has to have it. So it's attached to the organization unit and it's also attached to the account. They all say the same thing, but that shows the policy inheritance. And that shows you how uh, this is done automatically that you have a service control policy attached to everything within your organization, every account and every OU. Now let's go and write our own policies. So I can, there's a bunch of different places I can do that. I'm going to click in here, service control policy and create a policy. And let's call this uh, protect root and org. And then we're going to say uh, restrict the root account and the ability to leave AWS organizations. We have to write our policy here. Now you could actually go ahead and use the builder to write the policy. Instead, what I'm going to do is copy and paste it from the blog post. Uh, I will uh, switch over to the blog post here and I'm going to copy that out. Yours will look different because I'm still writing the blog post as we're going along, but you'll see that text block there. I'm going to select everything here, paste it in. And hopefully I got everything correct. I actually, let's see if I get an error because these are both listed as a single statement. Create policy. Okay. It's happy with my policy. Uh, now I want to take that policy and go to actions, attach. And while I want this on everything, I'm going to attach it to my root. And now I'm all set. It's that easy, takes just a few minutes. Now our organization is protected uh, and nobody can leave the organization and they are unable to do anything with the root account. That's it. Talk to you next week.